Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. This week, I'm gonna be getting a K-pop style makeover and maybe even becoming a bona fide K-pop stan. Now, if you've been basically anywhere on the internet at all over the last couple of years, you've probably been exposed to K-pop from stan wars on Twitter to meme compilation videos on YouTube, as well as legions of confused BTS fans on any behind the scenes videos. But regardless, it's true that K-pop or Korean pop music Music has gone from popular internationally to like explosive internationally, with performance and music videos garnering hundreds of millions of views, and groups like BTS and Blackpink going on world tours, headlining major music festivals, and appearing on every late night talk show imaginable. Hey, Jimmy! Yeah! I'm Jimmy! And besides the highly polished singing and dancing and the extremely extra music videos, another huge element of K-pop is the style, as in the numerous over-the-top fashions that their stars wear in music videos and during performances, like neon feathered tube tops, what look like baby blue thigh-high Uggs, and ever-changing pastel hair colors. So I figured that our travels to South Korea this year would be a perfect opportunity for me to get my own dramatic K-pop style makeover. And to do this, we're gonna be teaming up with a whole squad of stylists in Seoul who have worked with actual K-pop artists before to help me achieve a head-to-toe look, an outfit, hair, and makeup. And maybe along the way, we'll be able to answer the age-old questions of just why is K-pop so popular? What actually is Gangnam Style anyway? And most importantly, Jun Shina, are you Ami? All right. Let's go. Now, as someone who didn't know a whole lot about K-pop before making this video, I tried to do my research before our trip to Seoul, and this is sort of what I got a feel for in terms of like how the industry works. As a quick disclaimer though, I am still new to this, so I don't mean to offend any stands. If for whatever reason we don't include specific groups or performers, please don't come for my wig or my merkin. So basically, the K-pop industry is run by like a handful of production companies that sort of put together boy and girl groups from pools of young trainees through like a very rigorous selection process. And once these groups debut, after years of practicing and polishing, these production companies basically manage them, schedule their many appearances and performances, and produce their albums, their music videos, and also their like vlog style reality shows. <laughs> I know his face. There are solo performers as well, but there's a lot of focus on the groups. And besides being performers, these K-pop stars, also known as idols, also become major influencers with their looks, their style, as well as with the products they promote. With some idols even getting sponsorships to wear certain things to the airport. It's called airport fashion. And you really witness their omnipresence firsthand as soon as you land in Seoul, because pretty much everywhere you turn, there is K-pop. From bank ads, to contact lens merchants, to adjacent skincare stores. And I heard from some people in Seoul that you know a K-pop idol has made it when they have a chicken sponsorship. BBQ! Obviously, every country uses celebrities to promote products and places, but it's an impressive spread. And because these idols can be so influential, their images are quite carefully curated by master stylists who pretty much dress them from head to toe for every occasion. So to start our makeover, we were going to be visiting a K-pop stylist who was going to help me pick out my outfit. So in Seoul, we were staying in the Myeongdong area, which is a touristy but fun and busy shopping neighborhood. But to meet up with our stylist, we had to cross the Han River to get to the Gangnam area. Yes, that Gangnam. So we were joined by our friend Hoju Sarah, a Seoul-based YouTuber, <laughs> as well as a self-proclaimed K-pop stan. <laughs> who was going to be acting as our guide and translator. So we hopped on the subway to get across town. So we're going to the Gangnam area, but specifically um, Apjong, which is in Gangnam, because Gangnam's massive, so mm. there's like a small part of it. Gangnam is definitely a nicer part of Seoul, but it's more of a general term than I originally thought. I guess it's less like the Upper East Side and more like saying the entire island of Manhattan. So on our way over there, I asked Sarah, as a K-pop fan, what she thought was a current trend 
trend that our stylist might put me in. I feel like, and maybe just I really hope that they put you in like a leather harness because I see so much of that like in K-pop on like the posters and seeing as you really love black, I feel like you would work well with the kind of like combat boot look. Like the Lara Croft. I had actually noticed this trend a bit as well and I would not have been opposed to something like that. I want to see, yeah, I want to see lots and lots of leather straps. And if we don't get leather straps today, you know, we can always just do that on our own. So after about 30 minutes on the train, we arrived in Apujang and walked over to the fashionable clothing boutique Boy Plus, where we were going to be meeting our stylist, Miss Jung. Stylist, Jung Boyun-ibnida. I'm working with a Korean pop star. And Miss Jung has worked with popular acts such as Sunmi, April, Card, Promise 9, as well as Ghost Generation, and, and TVXQ, Wiki Wiki. There's a lot of teams. And she picked out this store in particular because it's frequented by a lot of K-pop stylists for everything from outrageous music video looks to more toned down streetwear. We have a lot of style here, a little bit girlish, mm. also feminine, all sexy, also glam. Oh. So you can try all of them. <laughs> so we have everything in here. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. The clothes in this shop are also inspired by current K-pop stars with different sections themed around the signature styles and concepts of different groups. For example, this part, as for you know the twice, Mm -hmm. Like plaid and houndstooth patterns inspired by the popular girl group Twice, a section of bold and shiny statement pieces. Whoa! <laughs> That's Most awesome. Most money, so we can, we can imagine black pink. As well as on the other side of the store, cute and preppy looks inspired by groups like Weki Meki, who is one of the groups that Miss Jung styles. Yeah, I've been stalking your Instagram. Mm. <laughs> She's like, there's only my son on there. Yeah, he's so cute. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. Very stylish. Oh, yeah. I work for him as well. <laughs> and apparently, pastel colors and gingham skirts are quite a popular look for K-pop girl groups. Uh, most of Korean girl group wears like that mm. for the school girl look or plaid style. Boy Plus also has a healthy dose of just generally trendy stuff, like bright neon colors. It's like the biggest trend in Korea at the moment is like the neons, particularly like neon green yes. is a lot. Mm. But I feel like the division in the store between the swaggy and the sweet stuff sort of reflects the two major poles of K-pop female idol fashion. Like a cutesy, youthful look, or like a sexy, glam, tougher style. And a lot of the groups seem to sort of evolve through the different styles, like starting off kind of schoolgirl and then becoming more glamorous, or like mixing up their fashion to match the different concepts of their songs. What is your preferred style that you like to put artists in? It's a depend on song or mm. depend on oh, the choreography. choreography. But normally I prefer to glam style. Mm. <laughs> More than sexy. <laughs> it's more fun to do. Yeah. Oh. So with all of that explained, it was time to jump in. All right, so shall we pick out some outfits? All right, okay. We were gonna pick out three options to try on and then choose one to be our final outfit. And first up was a summery lime green look. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and then panty back. Oh, like so, a crossbody yes, fanny yes, pack? Yes, yes, And I guess we were considering this sort of our trendy neon option. You look like a melon. Well, I haven't even worn it yet. <laughs> I like it. No. It's good. <laughs> There's an uh, ice cream in Korea called Melina, mm. which is like this bright, like green ice cream. And I just yeah. like, it's that. <laughs> I'll look very tasty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, perfect, awesome. Option one. Mm, yeah, option one. Next up, we wanted to pick out a tough slash glam outfit and much to Sarah's delight, waiting for us on that rack was a leather harness, ready to be paired with a shiny crop jacket. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. The new harness. As well as a red top with black buckle accents. Yeah, I think I could probably squeeze into it to complete our second look. All right, so this is um, the, what do you call it, sexy? Yeah. The sexy, sexy look. look yes. Is that like a black pink? Mm, yeah. Then we zip over to the other side of the store, just sneaking in. It's <laughs> holding my haul to find our third option, which was supposed to be a sweet and preppy look that included a pink matching sweater set and a little pink beret. That's so cute. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> this is a good look. And with our options in hand, where where am I going? This way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, this way. I was sent off to the dressing room. All right, let me go try this on. One at a time, not all at once. And first up was our trendy neon green look. Oh, wow. 
Hello. You are green. <laughs> I am the melon ice cream. <laughs> oh, wow. This is cool. This is really cool. This is very different. What do you think? Oh yeah, very cute. <laughs> very cute. Miss Jung had mentioned that a big reason that lime green is so much in the uh, limelight is that Pantone selected it as a trending color of the summer. Oh, I think Mr. Lime is a suit on you. Oh, it does? Yeah, Thank yeah. you. In addition to the green dress, we also added a bunch of bright barrettes, which seem to be popular amongst K-pop idols, as well as a pair of my own Nike sneakers that I brought from home. As it seems like it's also a trend to pair flowy dresses with chunky sneakers or dad shoes. I thought you wear the looks like a little bit feminine, but well, the the sneakers, then more casual. As for me, I actually really liked the lime green. I think it makes it not so girly. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's a yeah, little yeah. bit like a cool color. And the outfit itself seemed decently comfortable for summer. It's not too tight. I feel like a cool breeze. I'm liking it. But although it was a fun look, we were ready to see something a little more dramatic. Which one shall we do next? The harness one? Ah, yes, the harness one. You might have to help me get into it. I don't know which way. <laughs> okay. Which way I go in? How do I enter it? And as I predicted, I did actually need a fair amount of help, but after some finagling, I eventually got in and barged out of the dressing room. What do you think? Oh my goodness. Yeah? Is this is this a vibe? This is, is this totally a, a vibe. Are you ready? Oh my, look? wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. I was a tall drink of Fruity Pebbles. This jacket is amazing. <laughs> I am obsessed with this jacket. Yeah. In addition to the things we had picked out, I was also wearing my own cargo pants that I had brought from home as backup, just in case my thighs were too juicy for the K-pop idol sizes. It's oh, She's like, it really suits you, I agree. Yeah? yeah. Can you please wear that as airport fashion? <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, Sophia spotted that. at airport <laughs> in unknown harness situation. You might set off some metal detectors. Yeah, that's true. The harness trend in K-pop has been around for a little while, not necessarily started, but definitely memed into oblivion as a result of BTS's use of leather body harnesses during their fake love era. And since then, variations on the harness have been seen on boy and girl groups alike, including our outfit inspo, Blackpink, who rock a Lara Croft slash seductive Seat belt vibe in their Kill This Love music video. So this is like the kind of thing people would wear like at a concert or something. You know, it's a very popular style for concerts because it's very mm. visual. Mm. Oh, also the lighting picks up on it really well, mm. like the concert lighting. Yeah, I definitely see that. I feel like from far away, I could be seen. That soft K-pop move right yeah, there. No, it's not a K-pop move. <laughs> it's just my dance move. Overall, I think we all liked it. It's like a sexy train conductor. And I think beyond just wow, there were a lot of things to say about it. I have a very vague like marching band feel. Oh yeah, marching band. The, the, yeah. The yeah, like kind of like a... Yeah, we can imagine, yeah. <laughs> marching band. But like a fashionable marching band person. But before we got too attached, we had to try on our final option. Last one. Yeah, let's try on the third one, shall we? Now I did encounter a bit of a speed bump when trying on the third outfit, and that bump was my booty, because the pink skirt was really not gonna make it over the hill. So in lieu of hulking out of the sweater set, Miss Jung picked out an alternative, girlish, cute look for me that could work with one of the mini skirts I had brought from home. Oh, wow. <laughs> what I do you love think? beret. I haven't seen myself, so yeah. I can't say anything. Okay, try that one as well. Oh, more, more bags. More bags. <laughs> now, aside from the crossbody bag, this new option consisted of a short sleeve button down with heart-shaped buttons, a plaid beret, and cherry statement earrings, along with my houndstooth skirt and chunky white sneakers. Oh! Yeah. Oh, it's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, actually. I love the bag. And I think we were all kind of digging the look. Yeah, it's so cute. This looks like Korean dog. <laughs> It really does. <laughs> it seems like this was the most typical K-pop girl group look out of all of our options. I like the sort of like slight puff at the shoulder. This looks more golly. Oh, like a little yeah. cap sleeve mm. kind of? Yeah. And I was feeling pretty peppy and preppy. Yeah, I kind of look like a very cute golfer. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? There are some driving ranges here. We could just go there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get you to tee off a few shots. Should we go golfing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I can't unsee it. Yeah. yeah. And I think this one was actually a pretty strong contender to be our final outfit. I think my two favorites are this look and then the previous look with the harness. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Actually, I prefer that harness one. Oh, yeah. But normally Korean girls will look well like that. So although this was more of a traditional girl group style, I think we were all fans of the sexy train conductor look. I think we had the harness in mind when we came in, so to leave without a harness would be a shame. And besides the harness trend, the other elements of the outfit actually also played into different K-pop themes, like the tinsel fringe being good for movement in performances, and the cargo pant actually being a trend itself as like an alternative girl idol look. And I definitely feel some Blackpink spirit in it, kind of like Lisa-ish because they seem to put her in pants a lot, but I also see shades of other girl groups like Red Velvet, G Idol, and Itzy amongst others. So next up, we have to get a makeup and a hair look, oh. and then we can complete our K-pop makeover and then go out into Seoul and see what people think of me, I guess. <laughs> Do K-pop stuff. So we thanked the marvelous Miss Jung for all of her help. I had a good time. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. And moved onwards to the next phase of our makeover. So the next day, we headed over once again to Gangnam, but this time to the Cheongdam neighborhood to get to Jenny House Primo, which is a very impressive multi-storied gold and marble luxury beauty salon, which has been visited by a fair amount of Korean celebrities like K-pop groups 101, IOI, Seventeen, VIX, and TVXQ. And for my makeover, we were going to be working with hairstylist Taesung. 안녕하세요, 제니하우스 헤어 디자이너 태성. And makeup artist Inha. They had given us our own room on the top floor that featured two vanities teeming with makeup. I'm very excited. There's like such an intense spread to my left right here. Like I've never seen this much makeup out except for maybe when we make our like crazy like melting makeup series. So yeah. I kind of feel like we're going to make like a Korean Franken blush right now. Yeah. But I know that's not the point of what's happening. It's today. not. No, that's not what we're going to be doing. We're staying focused. And they were going to be taking a side simultaneous pass at my face and my hair. So it's all just gonna be like one segment. They're all just gonna attack me at once. All right, should we get started? Let's start. Let's go. Awesome. <laughs> so they started prepping me from the ground up. I'm being groomed. Shampooing and blow drying my hair, as well as cleansing and applying serums to my skin. Is the smacking to help it get in? The people tie bulky with it. Yeah, tie bulky. So it absorbs into your skin better? Yeah, it's a loving slap. I love tap. A love tap. <laughs> and once I was fully prepped, it was time to make a game plan. For the makeup, what kind of look do you, are we going for? Now for my face, Inha wanted to make sure that the makeup matched the glam vibe of our outfit. So like a more stronger idol makeup look she was thinking. Mm. I think in general, K-pop makeup tends to mirror a lot of K-beauty trends, which favor clear dewy skin, rosy stained lips, and usually warmer toned eyeshadow looks. But for today, we were gonna be adding a bit more color and shimmer, and just generally turning up the volume. So for you today, she's gonna go with like a burgundy look. Awesome. So I think we'll go really well with like the, the red and everything. Yeah, and the purple yeah. tinsel jacket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As for my hair, Taesung also had some fancy ideas. He had seen a hairstyle on Jenny from Blackpink that he was inspired by, which was kind of like a half up, half down look with long wavy tresses. So they prepared extensions for you to add in? Oh. Oh. That looks good. There are a lot of different hair looks in K-pop, but I would say that female idols tend to have long hair that they can swish around. So extensions were not a bad idea. But given that everything was happening at once, we're going to explain the makeup first. And Inha started off by slathering me with some foundation. She is kind of buttering me with like a dull knife, but I like it. To achieve that even dewy complexion. After that, we moved moved on to pink and peach shimmery eyeshadow and dark brown smudged eyeliner. She then proceeded to flame and approach my eyelashes with a wooden skewer. Whoa, what was that? 
So th this is a really common in Korea because they were like, if you heat the eyelashes, they curl better. I had never heard of this before. And though it was slightly scary, it was also pretty cool. I smell toasted. <laughs> it looks good. In addition to that, Inha added some small iridescent sequins on my lower lash line. It's a trend in kind of like crystals or like pearls like around the eyes. And this eye bling trend has been seen on male and female idols, notably on singer Chung Ha. Do they look like beautiful tears? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, that's like my vibe, I'm like emotional. After that, Inha added some fake lashes and then barbecued those two. More roasting? Mm -mm. Yes. Okay, okay. More roasting. Mm, more roasting. From there, she tried to tame my overgrown eyebrow hedges. Oh, I'm getting chopped. And then finally, she added a pink moussey lip color to finish off my face. Okay. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> awesome. What do you think, Ty? You look great. I love it. I was really pleased with how the makeup turned out, but we didn't have too much time to dwell on it right then, as Taesung had just been rolling right along with my hair, adding the extensions in kind of section by section. It's looking very lush back here. I can feel it. I feel something growing. Besides long hair, Taesung mentioned that another big thing in K-pop hair is dyeing it a lot. So there's like a lot of like really vivid colors that they dye their hairs. Which is why you're making your hair blue today, Sophia. <laughs> that wasn't actually our plan, but I was curious as to what color Taesung would recommend for me if I was actually an idol. He was like, um, so a red, but not like like a deep red, more like a pastel red. Mm. Like with like a lot of kind of white as a base. Oh, now I have to take that into consideration. But returning to our Jenny hairstyle, we started floofing the hair at the crown of my head. I like the volume I'm seeing up here. For one moment, it's 80s. And spraying down my waves. I feel like a mermaid. Oh, now I feel like I'm in an aquarium. <laughs> oh, yo, I'm back. Oh, I'm back. Oh, nope, just kidding, goodbye. Next, he pulled back the hair from the top part of my head to create that half up look, and then turned his attention to styling the baby hairs around my face. Oh, he's curling my sideburns. It's happening. They're being incorporated into the look. I'm pleased. <laughs> From there, he started crafting our top bun, which was supposed to look sort of like a blooming rose sprouting from my skull. It's so cute, I love it. It's just a little baby bun. Oh yeah, spray that sucker down. Taesung then went into a sort of snipping mode. Are you right if he cuts these little sure. bits here? But it's quite like popular trend in Korea at the moment. Oh, it looks a bit cuter and it makes your face look smaller. And there were no tendrils left untrimmed. Are my sideburns the right length though? He's like, oh, I can cut the, the bottom a bit then. Oh, if you want to, yeah. Oh. Done. Oh, <laughs> it happened. <laughs> the seed had been planted. Bye bye. <laughs> just a little snip. I was then declared almost finished. So now I'm just gonna go put on my outfit and then we'll do like final touches at the end just to make sure I didn't mess it up by putting on my harness. So I headed back to the dressing room and Sarah volunteered as tribute to help me get buckled up. Just getting strapped in. And I think we figured out that you're actually supposed to step into the harness. So the straps kind of lay on your hips rather than just being threaded through your groin. Oh, that could be it. Because then you're supposed to hang like suspenders or something from there. I was thinking it was too crotch based yesterday. <laughs> Which I think was mostly my bad. Like we were having a hard time figuring out and then I was like, oh, let's put it here. <laughs> but regardless, we eventually got the harness on properly. You're like a BTS meme right now, right? You got all oh, the- Oh, I thought you were gonna say BTSM. No. That's where my head was at. That was better. And I think it was all starting to come together. Watch out, I'm approaching your area. Black pink oh. in your area. Oh. <laughs> It's a, supposed to be a black pink sort of reference. I'll it, try that again. It made sense to me. Yeah, okay. no, it did actually. No, I, I got that. I got yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Black pink's in the area. She's coming to your area. So I donned my glittery jacket. Hello. And returned to the chair to get finished off. Wow. They're saying it's so pretty. Oh, you like it? Wow. Unbelievable. Oh. <laughs> Best choice. I was glad to hear that Taesung and Inha were fans of the outfit. Oh, if you walk around like this, aren't people going to think that you're like a foreign idol, like mm. it's all from overseas? We're from the exotic land of Glendale. <laughs> <laughs> and after some final curling. Oh, hold on, sorry. Uh -huh, the no. jacket's I, coming in. Yeah, you look like a good guy. And a little glitter in the eyebrows. Our look was done. Okay, finish. Completely finished? Yeah. Wow. I love it.
I've been looking at myself for a while, so it's not like a reveal. It's not like I'm like, oh my God, look at it. No, I've been looking at it. It looks so good. Overall, I was really impressed by the hair and makeup transformation that had occurred on my head. In particular, I really liked the stained looking lips, as well as the rhinestones around the eyes, and the extensions and the top bun really had me feeling stage ready. Plus, the sideburn trim was a nice bonus. So we thanked Taesung and Inha for all of their help. Hi, bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And stepped outside to see the full outfit in all its glory. Which after all of our shopping, slapping, and snipping, ended up being a tendrilled, strapped, Blackpink-inspired ensemble that made me feel both like an idol and also like a wall of glitter. So now that we have our final K-pop makeover look, it's time to wander around Seoul and do some sort of K-pop idol-ish things. In particular, we had outlined a few locations to visit that are K-pop related and or frequented by K-pop idols. And our first stop was SM Entertainment, one of the large K-pop production companies who rep groups like Red Velvet, EXO, and Girls' Generation. Are you gonna ask them to try to debut? I brought my harness, is that all I need? Listen, I feel like I'm, I may be a little old to start off as a trainee, but do you need me? In addition to being like where groups actually come to practice and record, SM Town also has a cafe out front where fans hang out hoping to catch a glimpse of their favorite idol. Apparently this little like back room pink boardroom area is where like a lot of the K-pop idols will eat when they come to the cafe. Oh clearly that's why I'm qualified to be. Because you're dressed like that. They're like we don't want you out there. And on their cafe menu they have like idol themed items like red velvet cupcakes. Skewer it and then I'm gonna shotgun that thing. As like merch for the different members of Red Velvet. Mm. It's so good. They also designate on the menu which items are certain groups' favorites, so you can drink what they drink. Sarah and I both got black tea lattes, which is apparently FX's favorite drink off of the menu. Ah. We bought in to the marketing device. Yeah. Besides the cafe, they also have a pretty decked out gift shop on the same floor, selling like their group's posters, albums, and concert cheering sticks. I feel like I have a lightsaber. Yeah, you're holding it like that. Which is what the fans will wave around in the audience during performances. I look kind of like um, an airport arrival guy. <laughs> Bring the plane this way. <laughs> Overall, I really enjoyed my visit to the SM headquarters. The similarities are uncanny. Whether they enjoyed me visiting or not. I don't know if they're gonna bring me back for a comeback. I'm not sure. <laughs> but it was time for us to move on to our second destination. So we hopped into a cab and headed across Gangnam to the next stop on our proverbial K-pop map of fame. All right, so we are here at Laundry Pizza because BTS once did a photo shoot here, so now a lot of BTS fans come here to also take photos. Like us. Which is what we are doing right now. Laundry Pizza is first and foremost a pizza restaurant with like laundromat themed decor. Oh, it's just a mirror. Oh, so it's good that we didn't bring our laundry. But over the last couple of years, it's also been a popular place for K-pop groups to shoot music videos or do photo shoots. So it's sort of evolved into an Instagram destination where people go to like generally soak in BTS's aura and pose like them. It's like a lean, right? Yeah, you gotta lean. I won't mount the table, but I'll lean. I'm not sure if I successfully recreated their shoot, but we did eat some pizza. Pretty good. And I also did some dancing that no one requested. Just to, you know, quell any fears from the audience, I don't think I'm dancing like BTS right now. No, no, you're not. So from there, we went on our way, catching a little bit of afternoon sun. This is my twilight moment. Where is it? There we go, there we go. And there it is. And then bopping over to stop number three, our final destination of the day, DDP, or Dongdaemun Design Plaza, which is sort of like this huge silver spaceship looking building where they host Seoul Fashion Week, K-pop award shows, and also I think like a generally popular place to be photographed, take photographs, and pose. And maybe even film K-pop music videos? Yes, definitely. It kind of reminds me as a Chicago of like the bean, but like matured. <laughs> if the bean sprouted. If the bean oh. sprouted. 
that's not bad. <laughs> so after taking a few futuristic looking Instagrams, it's like I'm being teleported into the alien spaceship, we attempted a couple of medium executed slow-mo walks, kind of to mimic a music video shot. Is that good? I don't, I don't know. Which did actually showcase the outfit pretty well. Like the tinsel was flowing, the straps were containing, the sideburns were windswept, and there was even an opportunity for a scandalous Jimin style shoulder reveal. But unfortunately, while all wrapped up in the moment, <laughs> we forgot about Tyler. Are you okay? Yeah. And after Tyler absolutely ate it on like a bollard or something, it seemed about time to wrap it up. All right, you want to rock and roll? Let's go. Let's blow this popsicle stand. Okay, so that was my K-pop makeover. Overall, I had a bit of a blast in the outfit and a great time bouncing around Seoul. Whoa! All right, sit on top of that and pretend it's your tank. And I feel like I learned a lot about K-pop style and some of the tropes that they use to like express the different tones of the groups and performers. So much swag. <laughs> this is swag. I think I actually liked everything about this look, to be honest. My only real complaint was that the jacket got a bit frazzled and crimped getting in and out of cabs all day. It's a little bit temperamental, but you know, we're working with it. So I think it might be meant more for like a single three minute performance. Now I will admit that while doing our research, I have fallen down the K-pop suggested video rabbit hole and become a K-pop stan, which sort of has helped me develop a working theory as to just why K-pop might be so popular. Now in general, K-pop's international reach is considered to be part of what's known as Hallyu, or the Korean wave, AKA the increased relevance of South Korean pop culture on the global stage since the late 90s. But as for its more recent explosiveness in the West, I think that YouTube itself is playing a huge role. Because once you click on one video, there's so much K-pop content on the platform to algorithmically refer to you, it's hard not to get sucked in because you can just keep watching. From performances, to dance practices, to Korean variety shows, it's sort of easy for your entire homepage to just turn into K-pop. And on top of that, there's also legions of eager fans on the platform trying to promote their faves by adding subtitles to any and every video they can and making countless compilation and meme videos to contribute to the stream. In fact, when I think about it, it's actually almost miraculous that I haven't fallen into the K-pop hole until now, but I am happy to be here. I guess you could say this is my debut. I think next up on my K-pop checklist is to one, start wearing more harnesses and two, learn how to dance just for everyone's benefit. I don't know if you can call what I've been doing dancing. It's more like urkeling near pizza. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. And once again, a huge thank you to Sarah, Miss Jung, Taesung, and Inha for all of their help with our makeover. And also to Boy Plus, Jenny House, and the SM Cafe for allowing us to film. If you liked that video, make sure to shamash that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to shamash that subscribe button. Here are my social media handles and a big shout out to Trixie for watching. Thanks for watching Trixie, and I will see you guys a next time.